welcome you all for the set for the webinar on getting started with robotics we have a honor honorable speaker mr nipun kumar sir senior ieee member currently working as assistant professor at department of computer science amrita school of engineering pursuing my his phd in the area of service robotics in amrita robotic research lab His research interests include mobile robotics, industrial robotics, robot learning for demonstration, and Internet of Things. So I would request Nipun sir to continue with the session. Thank you. A good evening, all. Uh, thank you, Charita, for the warm welcome. Uh, let me share the screen. uh ron i am not able to share the screen can you give me the yes yeah got it thanks okay yeah hope hope my uh, thing is visible sir it's visible yeah thank you so uh, good evening one and all so uh, welcome to this uh, session on uh, getting started with uh, robotics so uh, yes so this would be the overall uh, talk flow for today's session so i I'll, i'll start with a little introduction on uh, uh, robotics and uh, why we need to uh, study this field or what is the motivation uh, which for which this field uh, you can proceed as your uh, career then uh, research scope in robotics what are the different areas of applications available in robotics and uh, what are the different domains of engineering play a part uh, in in this field and then uh, uh, the the uh, topic of the session getting started with robotics will look at and uh, towards the end i'll just give you a small brief uh intro on uh, ieee robotics and artificial robotics that's one active society in uh, ieee so this is this agenda so uh first first thing is what is a robot so basically uh it's a machine capable of carrying out a complex series action automatically automatically especially one programmable by a computer if you if you start googling uh the uh, definition for robotics or defined robot uh, any kind of a keyword you will end up with a uh, lot of different definition almost all the definitions have a certain degree uh, towards uh, some keyword like basically reprogrammable automatic a uh, multidimensional so these are the keywords which play a major role in this field so this is one such definition from wikipedia then there is another definition by Uh, robotic institute of america 1979 they defined robot as a reprogrammable multifunctional manipulator designed to move material parts so so that that was the definition then 1979 so so that is what basically uh, a robot is basically it's an uh, automatic device some cases of semi automatic device which is used to perform some mundane task so that's basically what it is so so then what is robotics so basically it's a branch of study that deals with design construction operation and application of robots as well as computer systems for their control sensory feedback and information processing so basically uh, that is what uh, robotics is so starting from uh, the design of the robot till the application of the robot the entire process we we put under this of robotics so so given uh, the definition and all this uh why why we need to go for robot so obviously uh one reason would be just just an interest because it's always good to see things live and uh, good to see what you design is moving around in the environment and uh, interacting in the environment obviously that's first uh, kind of craze people always uh, um, go towards this topic or this area robotics but apart from that there must be some other uh logical reasoning why this is very popular apart from that first uh, uh whatever the interest so what is that so basically uh one one such uh uh 
feature or one such thing is hazardous environment. You can use robots in hazardous environment. Basically, that's one primary uh, reason uh, robotics is very, very uh, popular. Uh, so, for example, uh, you can see this picture. So, this is a Mars rover, a Mars rover built by our uh, uh, team uh, in our uh, in space. So, uh, a Mars rover is basically a, a mobile robot which is uh, designed to work on a Mars surface to pro uh, kind of investigate the surface for various uh, uh, living organism, uh, water availability, all those kind of things. Uh, people are using Mars rover. Basically, that is uh, the purpose of this kind of robot. Okay, so that's basically where, we, as a human, we don't know whether we can go and do all these things. So it's other as far as naturally, uh, robot uh, come into play. What are the other fields? You have uh, nuclear power plant. So even now, the power plant in Japan, Fukushima power plant, people are using robots to clean all the nuclear waste and stuff. Wherein, uh, if human being goes, the radiation is, is going to cause, uh, I mean, cause some health hazards to the uh, human beings. So people are using different kinds of teleoperated robots. So that one example I can say, sewage cleaning robot. That is again one upcoming uh, area where many startups, at least in India, I know many startups are working on sewage cleaning robots, which can automatically clean sewage. So that the manual labor used for that can be can be saved. And then. Uh, uh, coming to the present scenario where all of us are in this uh, pandemic situation, social distancing has become uh, the way of our life. So, so, so to maintain the social distancing, uh, some of the hospitals are using robots now. So the first person or the first point of view is a robot when you go to big hospitals. It takes the initial, uh, from, uh, initial uh, data and then only direct you to the corresponding uh, person, a doctor, or whomsoever that is. So, so the, uh, robots are used in all these uh, areas where hazardous environments are, I mean, hazardous for humans. So that's one purpose. What is the next, second purpose? So that's basically a task that is repetitive and for it. So uh, I attribute these kind of uh, things to an industrial management. Naturally, that is what every day, day in and day out, it does. Uh, in an industry, people, a manufacturing industry, people do the same thing. Uh, a car manufacturing industry, they do the same thing day in and day out and then uh, make cars and then send out and then again start the whole cycle again and again. So those kind of places, uh, uh, robotics can be used wherein you don't use much uh, the thought process into it or much human brain power into it. It's just a mundane task. So, so those kind of tasks also, I mean, for those kind of tasks, you can easily use a robot. So whatever you see, this picture, it's a it's an anthropomorphic arm uh, built for uh, a lot of other purposes. But here we are testing out uh, how we can train a robot to hold a cloth. So so that this picture. So uh, so it can be used in industrial manipulator, service robot, like a robot waiter, a uh, robot uh, waiter which fetches you food from the kitchen in a hotel to your table. Uh, so those kind of things. Uh, as of now, or, or right now, it's not fiction anymore. You have robot, robots waiting you in tables even in India. I know some hotels in India are trying out. Some hotels have implemented these kind of robots, wherein you order and food comes to you. A, a robot is uh, take, uh, bringing you the food. So that kind of task also uh, comes under this repetitive and boring task. So that's one one aspect. What is the next aspect? So precision, flexibility, and control. So that is the other aspect. So uh, obviously, machine is more precise than human, even though we, as a human, who made these kind of machines, but naturally, uh, because of fatigue and a lot of other factors, doing things continuously, we will uh, have, I mean, the efficiency will slow down and the precision will go off. So all those things tend to happen with us, but with machines, those kind of things are not possible. So, so that is one uh, example. Whatever picture you see there, that space, that is a a, a robot operation uh, uh, manipulator. So it's called as doctor robot. So it basically helps uh, surgeons do surgery in a very precise level. So uh, you can see there are certain sitting nearby. So this is one kind. There are uh, uh, robot uh, manipulator, manipulator operation surgery happens when the surgeon is not there, surgeon is somewhere else, and he teleoperates it and 
that's uh, surgery. So that is also possible. So all these kind of applications, precision is one very uh, important requirement. So that's one uh, scenario. The other scenario we can take off like uh, semiconductor industry where circuit boards are often built, soldered. So there also robots are used. Mobile phone manufacturing, if you take all your uh, motherboards, they're all soldered. All those things are done by high-end, high precise, high precise uh, manipulators. So that's one thing. So then the next application is speed and efficient, naturally. So when, uh, when robot got into industry, uh, mainly uh, the first uh, uh, industry became popular is car manufacturing industry. So the throughput for that industry has became has increased drastically when you when you shift the industry totally to a uh, robotic based uh, industry where robots are used to manufacture cars. So the efficiency, the throughput, maintenance is less. So all those are the advantages. So that's that's one of the reasons. So basically, these are the entire uh, set of reasons, at, at least a few a basic set of uh, reasons why uh, robotics became popular or why you need to uh, learn robotics and then see if we can take it up as a career. Fine. So uh, a very brief history on robotics. I know almost all uh, robotics course you would have seen this. If you have taken some robotics course, these would be the uh, initial topics. So, uh, just to start with this, I, I wanted to give you a very brief history, getting uh, you through the uh, past timeline and the current scenario. So uh, this kind of idea where a machine can help human being or an automatic machine can do some tasks uh, uh, for human being came in 13th century itself, 13th, 15th century itself. They call them as automatons. They call them as automatons. So what is an automaton? It's basically an automatic mechanical device. Electronics were not there at all that, at that time. Excuse me. So, so basically, uh, those kind of automatons are considered to be uh, that period's robot object. Then 18th century, uh, you had an automatic scribe which can write for up to 40 characters. Then there, there was a robotic woman playing the piano. So all those kind of uh, robots uh, were there in that, uh, that age. So whatever picture you see, that's a, a robot in uh, Japan which serves tea. Uh, so that's what that picture is. It's an automaton, of course. So then uh, coming back to little uh, recent times compared to 15th century, uh, Tesla has revealed, uh, Nikola Tesla has revealed his own uh, invention. It's a it's a uh, torpedo control, basically, and uh, teleautomation. So this was uh, on 1898. So that was first kind of uh, robot. So um, mind you, until this time, there was no term called robotic stop. When this robotic or robot came, term came into existence, that was in 1921 by a tech writer called uh, Carl Sagan. So he is the person who coined this term robot. So it came from uh, um, whatever uh, the, that particular uh, series or the novel, uh, Robota. So what it means is worker. In, in that Slavic language. So it is an uh, uh, right, it is a series or it is a uh, play called Rossum's Universal Robot. So uh, that play went on like this. A uh, person builds his own robot for his helping purpose. Finally, uh, robot is taking over the world. That is how the play ended. So that that is the first official uh, usage of the word robot. So after that, it got picked up. Then. Uh, 1942, Isaac Asimov has invented the term robotic. So basically, he has written this, this novel called I Robot. I'm sure all of you will be aware of it. Uh, it has made into a movie, or, right? An uh, I Robot, Bill Smith movie. So the same thing. So he he has written. Uh, it is a lot of book on uh, by Isaac, Isaac Asimov on robotics. Even now, it's available. You can just check in Kindle. You have a lot of different uh, series of this. And I Robot was one of the initial books. So uh, he has introduced a uh, law of uh, robotics. So it's not a strict, hard and strict uh, rule we follow today, but yeah, it, it makes sense to a level. Uh, so that is the law of robotics. What are the there'll be three basic laws? Do not harm human beings. The second law is obey orders from humans that don't violate order. I mean, uh, the first law. Then the third law is protect own existence if it does not conflict with law one and law two. So these are the three different laws of uh, robotics uh, 
formed by uh, this law. So until this point of time, it's all fiction. It's all science fiction, not not a proper application or anything. It has come. So after that, in 1950, uh, George Gwall. So he actually uh, made his first programmable robot that is designed and. Uh, he basically uh, coined that as an universal automation. So this is one of the first manipulators. Okay. So uh, in computers, we have first generation, second generation, third generation, right? So in robot, if you try to categorize as first generation, second generation, uh, and so on, first generation would be manipulator. Now, in the current era, manipulators are a well-developed field in robotics. Comparatively, comparatively, there are a lot of other uh, fields in robotics which is just starting or in research space, not as reached in the time space, but manipulators are something which is well developed because that was the first generation. So somewhere around 1950, so he started uh, his own company, uh, George Dewall, based on a single manipulator called Universal Automation. So he, he later shortened it as Unimation. So that was the first robot uh, company in 1962. So this is his robot or that company's robot. It's called as Puma, it's a very popular uh, uh, manipulator, industrial manipulator, so developed by Unimation with General Motors design. So that was one thing. Then uh, getting into this uh, space exploration. So robotics has entered this uh, space race, so we call long ago. So even though now we say NASA is the space uh, organization which has a lot of robots in space or in Mars, uh, but uh, Soviet Union has tried it way before NASA. But only if they couldn't land it successfully, it was crash landed. But the idea came and the thought process and they built or designed the robot way before NASA and then they, on March 2 mission, they had sent it, uh, but only if it crash landed. But successfully, uh, NASA has, uh, uh, landed a robot and robot is working. So just to name a few, NASA's robot, there is Robo Not, which, which works with the astronaut in the space and helps in a health astronaut in a lot of different uh, uh, aspects of that. And then you have Mars rover, Curiosity, Perseverance. These are the Mars rovers which are even actively even now uh, exploring Mars. Then we have our own rover, Isro's rover, Pragya. Uh, it's a lunar rover designed and sent. Of course, unfortunately, that was also crash landed. But yeah, that was our first effort, India's first effort in uh, putting robot in uh, space. So yeah, so that is the current, until the current uh, thing. So that's a brief history. So so what what are the trends in robotics? So uh, just giving top uh, companies or top societies uh, ideology on this particular uh, field, IEEE Computer Society top 10 technology trends, robotics is one of it. So Business Insider's top 12 tech trends, robotics is one of it. And Fortune.com's uh, Four technology trend in that again robotics is one. Then uh, nextweb.com 13 technology trend, Accenture's technology vision. This is just to name a few. Any MNC you take now, robotics, they will have some research or something going on in robotics or its allied field. So that's how it is. So uh, I just have a small video. I don't think there'll be any audio on it, but uh, video is good enough. You can easily uh, uh, understand what's happening. This is a video from uh, here. So basically it's a consumer electronic uh, show. Uh, every year it happens in Las Vegas. So this is 2018 uh, uh, CES uh, video. So that that particular year, a uh, lot of uh, applications were based on robotics. So this is a consolidated video, which is uh, that, so. These are the few robots which uh, have been uh, shown in this particular CEA. I'm sure all of you know about this robot, Sophia. So this is one of the first uh, robot citizen. It got citizenship in, uh, I guess, uh, UAE, I guess, I'm not sure. This is a uh, play dog from Sony. So these are all products which you can actually buy now. 
your personal use. So this is a robot playing Scrabble. So it's a robot and artificial intelligence uh, application together. So yeah, so these, uh, I mean, I, I just wanted to show this video just to uh, get, get you uh, going with this. Robot can be of different shape and structure and can be of a lot of different application. As a toy, as a robot which is uh, serving you in restaurants and hotels, or a robot which plays games opposite to a human being. So the, the intelligence of the robot can be built to that much uh, level. So those are the uh, different aspects you can uh, get out of that uh, video. So fine. So what is the research scope? What are the possible application areas? So there are a lot of application areas. I've just summed up uh, what I felt was the, uh, what the top, top few, which, which can be, uh, which can be named as topic. So then uh, the first one is industrial robotics. Obviously, like I said, that's the first generation and still it is growing. It's been used in a lot of industries. So uh, there are a lot of examples. Now people use robotics in those kind of industries. Then we have uh, transportation system. Of course, when you look at this as a separate area, robotics doesn't uh, click, I mean, doesn't even, you don't really think that when, when you say about intelligent transportation system. But if you look at the subsystem like the navigation, path planning, those kind of things, all those are robotics allied field also. So, so to, to a level, you can easily uh, correlate these two. So that, that's one. Then search and rescue robots. So that's basically robots used in uh, disaster management scenario to, to figure out uh, uh, proof, proof of living and then uh, uh, direct the search and, uh, search and rescue team to that particular area in, the, in, the, in that particular uh, uh, disaster area so that uh, the, the effort has been put towards one section where there is some people who got stuck in rubble or uh, something like that. Robots play a different, I mean, a very important role. Then space exploration, I, I, we have already discussed on this. It's a very hot topic now. Then uh, robotics in agriculture, it, it's one growth field, at least in India, we, we started, people started thinking of, or at least their mindset has become some things like, okay, robots can help farmers. So there are a lot of startup companies working on different, different applications on agriculture uh, uh, robotics. So that's one hot topic or hot area. Then uh, we have mobile robots. So mobile robots are basically, can, can be of any form. So anything which moves, any robot which moves, it comes under this category. So you can see in this picture itself, you have different picture. On the top, you have, uh, uh, mobile robot, wheeled mobile robot, and then on the bottom you have a uh, humanoid with two legs, and then there is a quadruped, a four-legged robot. So any any kind of uh, form factor which moves this mobile robot, then an entire different uh, field that is human-robo interaction. So that is one of the fields where uh, um, you look at how humans and robot can work hand in hand in an environment. So how that kind of interaction will take place. So the research. Uh, it's a research is going on on that area too. So then you have robot simulation. That again a different field, wherein you you use your uh, robot simulation tool and try to implement your applications and then uh, look at uh, the performance and various other aspects. So that is one one field. So yes, these are the different fields. So coming into the uh, domains of uh, domains in robotics. So Okay, I'm a mechanical engineer. Will I have a role to play? I'm a computer science engineer or a student. Will I have a role to play? I'm an electrical engineer. Will I have a role to play? So to just answer those questions, I have put this slide. So, so uh, if you try to break down uh, all uh, robotics into different uh, 
subsystems. So these mini systems is one of the way to put it. So modeling, kinematics, dynamics, all these things comes under the the mechanical structure of any the physical structure of any uh, robot. So obviously mechanical engineer will have a role to play there. Then sensors, actuators, control system. So this is basically core to AAA and EC uh, engineering streams. And then you have embedded system programming. So again here. It's a mixed area. TSC would have a, a role to play embedded system. EC would have a role to play in embedded system. Communication, obviously, EC will have a play. Then power supply design. So basically, it's a uh, triply domain or or even there is a domain all power systems. Uh, so those those field uh, th that domain comes under this. So putting all together, uh, we know this fact. Robotics is an interdisciplinary area. Everybody will have some role to play, and always you have scope to learn other other field also so nowadays given current scenario you cannot stick to your domain 100 percent you should have little diverse knowledge and all the things and this is one field where you will easily get all those uh, other knowledge to at least a little so that's basically uh, what i would uh, suggest all of you to do. so yeah that is about the domains then what are the different components of robots so this is a very, very uh, abstract or a brief uh, block diagram of a typical robotic system. So uh, you, of course, you have power source. Power source can be your, your socket, the, the direct wall power supply, if it's a stationary robot like manipulator, or it can be a battery supply when if it's a mobile robot, wherein it moves in the environment to uh, perform some tasks. And then you have sensors, you have actuators. Sensors are basically uh, gives you uh, gives the controller what is happening in the environment. So through sensors is how you uh, get that information. Then controllers is actually the brains of the bot. So the brains of your robot. Then actuators are basically how robot interacts with the world. Through actuators is how they interact with the world. So that is the entire robotic system. And of course, user interface. This can be on board or this can be off board. So putting all this together. Uh, we call that a chassis or base of your robot. So in chassis, you will have entire thing. So like I said, user interface can be either on board or off. So this is a very brief or very uh, abstract way of looking at uh, the different uh, uh, or the block diagram of a typical uh, robotic system. So, so yes, so coming to the actual topic of the session, getting started in robotics. So, uh, when I was just thinking on this topic, how do I start and then how do I explain you guys uh, how to get to this? So I thought it's better to kind of categorize it and then stage by stage, if I can uh, put it, then it makes easy or it will make a lot more sense to people who are listening or people who are uh, actually trying to get into the field. So that way I've categorized three different levels, beginner level, intermediate level and your advanced level. So these are the three different levels. So, so obviously you, one of you, I mean, all of you would be coming under one of this category for sure. L1, L2, L3. So under every level, I just have three different stages. Okay. It's very simple. So that three stage kind of acts like a loop. Okay. So if you are in beginner level, you will be going iteration of this three stage again and again to learn things. Then you move on to the next level and then. Uh, go on this three stage again and again. So that's what uh, uh, the idea is. So the three stages are learning stage, hands on stage, and testing stage. Okay. So that is common for all their different levels. But what you learn, what you try hands on, and what you test will be different for L1, L2, and L3. So that's the idea. So uh, give, uh, just uh, looking at this, you can easily understand uh, a level one stage. Uh, what what you're going to learn is a very very basic. Stuff and then uh, immediately try to implement that. That would be my suggestion. My suggestion is always to learn, do something, and then test it, and then learn, do something, test it. So that that would be my suggestion. So that's the reason I have I have uh, given all the three stages uh, in a in a loop kind of. Effect. Okay. So let's look at individual stages of uh, every uh, level. So that will be little more uh, elaborate. So stage one. I mean, uh, uh, L1 learning stage. What what basically uh, should I learn here? 
all you have to learn here is very basic c and or python programming very very basic which i'm sure you would have if all of your engineering students i'm sure you would have learned it in your first year engineering uh, course for sure that that's good enough that very very uh, i mean that far uh, better or has required that good enough then little basic electronics which you have to learn again uh, what when i say basic electronics i'm not uh, talking about any course here all i'm talking is you should understand what is voltage what is current okay how to connect different things how to connect the sensor how to give power supply to a sensor so those kind of things is what i'm asking you to learn it's basically the diy diy things do it yourself kind of things is what uh, the the beginner level of robotics is i'm not sure about the other areas but uh, as for as my experience as for as how i started uh, dealing with this particular uh, topic and and working on this uh, area for almost probably 10 to 13 years now uh, i am so uh, looking at an overall this thing i would suggest this way so it's all diy so start with that curiosity and then start learning with your uh, diy skills so that basic electronics so nothing textbook here i don't need to refer any textbook and stuff just a proper internet connection with a lot of motivation and interest can easily get into this field so then programming microcontroller that's very important because like i showed you in the block diagram controllers are the brain so you should know some microcontroller and the best way to start is arduino arduino is a microcontroller which was released uh, thinking i mean uh, what what they had in mind is people who doesn't even know programming should be able to program this microcontroller and then implement some kind of a prototype so that is how arduino came into picture and that's why it is popular uh, i don't know um, how many of you know school kids program microcontroller nowadays at least in bangalore if you take school kids have uh, people are teaching school kids this kind of uh, microcontroller program so so that that is that is that how we speak so microcontroller speak activity or those are the general microcontrollers which you can easily uh, learn to program then interfacing sensors and motor very basic level sensor and motors you should be able to interface with a microcontroller so that is also like i said diy you can easily uh, get these details uh, and then learn now obviously your question would be this where do i learn i have to start somewhere right so where do i get these info okay fine you have to learn programming electronic controller programming all those things fine but now how do i get the info so one one obvious answer would be your engineering curriculum uh everybody uh, i mean uh, you will surely have some programming course for sure right and then if you are an ec or csc student naturally you will have some microcontroller programming so that that course would be there okay but yeah if you are starting off in your first year and you want to go right ahead get into the field probably microcontroller programming and things won't come in your syllabus at, at least at that point of time so what is the next next area the obvious answer i think all of you should know by now googling and youtubing is it's far better at least for this level i would suggest you to do directly that see for example i don't know how to connect a motor to a to an arduino just type literally type how to connect motor to arduino you will the first link you get 99% that link would give you a proper and you should be able to do it so the age is now the whatever field i mean uh, time we are now when internet gives you all the answers so that would be my uh, i know it is a very very uh, uh, silly answer it might look like a silly answer but this works so if it works then i don't mind putting this so that is that is one uh, at least for uh, level 1 this is good enough okay. so that should uh, able to easily uh, guide you apart from that if you still want one on one experience of course your seniors and teachers are always there okay uh, i don't know uh, teachers of course seniors also can help you in this aspect whoever has learned they can easily pass the information on this level so that's one uh, aspect and then there are a lot of workshops people uh, conduct for these kind of basic thing uh, if, if i don't know if you are uh, if you have looked at something you can easily i am not going to name any workshop i am not going to market anything here but yeah there are a lot of workshops and even there are some robotic training institute which do i i really don't know how how many of them are good or how many of them bad but uh, they they do offer uh, courses for the beginners okay 
this level, these are the basic information which you need and easily you can go ahead and, and kickstart your learning process at least. So fine, if I've learned all these things, what is next? Learning is not in. You have to put that in implementation and really see what, what you have learned. Okay? So that is the first thing implement uh, what is learned in learning stage. So how do I do that? Build your own real mobile robot. Uh, probably it is very easy to say. That's what some of you think. No, it's easy to do also. So how do I do it? See, uh, you see this picture, right? There is a, a robot picture. This is a small two-wheel robot. Um, believe it or not, this was built within two days uh, by set of first-year students. Okay. So we do this workshop in our uh, college just for our first-year students. Uh, they they don't know A of robotics or they don't know A of microcontroller programming. They just they just come in. In the one month when they join the institute, we we start this one weekend, Saturday, Sunday. We, we train them on whatever I just told you in the previous slide. We give them an overview of the entire thing. So when I say two days, I just say morning eight to evening four. That is what one day means, okay, one working day. So within two days, they'll be able to learn those concepts and then they'll be able to assemble. This robot will give them a disassembled one. They assemble all the things in the motors, wheels and sensors, wires, electronics, battery, and then they build it. Okay, after building what they do, so they build it for different applications. So what are the applications? Line follower is one application. I'm sure if you have come across, I mean, if you are uh, keeping some touch in this field, you should know what a line follower robot. So basically it's a robot which follows a black line on a white surface or a white line on a black surface, some contrast line compared to the surface, the, the, the floor surface. So that is a line follower robot. So that's a robot which uses a simple sensor called as an IR sensor. And then uh, some a simple uh, software logic will uh, get you build this particular robot. So then there is something called edge detector. You you leave this robot in a table, it'll not fall off. It knows where the edge is and it will go back. So it keep randomly moving in the table, but it doesn't fall off. There's no really great application for all these things. Only thing is you learn a lot while doing this. That's the aim here. So then a smartphone controlled robot using your own phone, using an open source uh, app available in web store or uh, Google store on app, Apple store, you can control your robot. You have to connect a Bluetooth, Bluetooth device to your robot and then you can control easily. So that could be done, can be done. Obstacle avoidance robot. Uh, if you can see in the picture in the front, you have that two small uh, speaker kind of thing, right? So that's basically an ultrasonic sensor. So using, using that sensor, you, it can detect if there is an object in front. So that is possible. So all these things was done at the end of the two days workshop. So if that can be done, I'm sure any one of you can easily do it. So like I said, so this this presentation was entirely made with all those kind of experience. I just put it on the slide. That's all done. So if you're doing on your own, then uh, obviously the next question would be, where do I buy these components? Okay, again, my obvious answer is going to be online. One of the answer, of course. Uh, so you get all these things in Amazon Flipkart, or not, there are a lot of robotic web stores. You Google it, you'll get it. Or offline, is it possible? Yes, not in all the places, but in Bangalore kind of places, it is possible. In Bangalore, you have a place called uh, SP Road. I don't know the audience, uh, hopefully all of them are from Bangalore. Then there is a place called SP Road. Go there, you can get whatever possible. Whatever is there, you can easily get it. Whatever you think, you can easily get it. So that place is filled with small, small shops with these kind of uh, who sell these kind of electronic uh, equipment. Yeah. So that is how I would suggest uh, to go on to the hands-on on the level one. So then testing. Obviously, you did this. Now, if I have to figure out, okay, where am where am I at? Uh, Am I, am I going in the correct path? How do I know all those things? So that is where the testing comes. This testing is not testing of your robot or whatever you've built, testing of your skill set, what you have learned. That's the testing phase. So my suggestion would be to participate in robotic competition. Okay. So that's uh, probably a little unorthodox to say, but uh, I, I feel that was one, where, one place where you can easily test your skills. And uh, the picture you see on the right side, 
those are some uh, robotic competitions happen in our institute. We, we conduct uh, robotic competitions. So the picture on the top you see that is basically a robot soccer, a robot playing football. Okay. Uh, of course, manually controlled bot, but uh, the bot and the uh, design and the software, everything was done by the students by themselves. And whatever the picture below you see, that's the line follower competition. You can see the line and the black, white background, black line, and uh, somebody is ready to uh, unleash their robot on the track. So that is uh, that picture. So this kind of robotic competition happens almost in all engineering institutes, an annual event. They, they conduct this event annually. So, uh, try to participate in these competitions, not with the motive of winning. Of course, winning is there, but uh, the part of the uh, game here is to test and understand where you are at compared to your peers. That's the whole point. Okay. So every competition will have some beginner level events like line follower, robot race, well, wherein uh, this level, uh, L1 level uh, learners can easily uh, participate. Why, why I need to participate? Basically to test your skills, debugging skills and adjust on the fly skills, the program on the fly in that uh, particular competitive environment, how you work, all those kind of things. And of course, the other reason would be networking. You will get to know people interested in that field uh, from different institutes. Okay? That will uh, come in handy for you at some point of time, will be helpful for you at some point of time. So yeah, so that is what my suggestion would be. So this is the three stage under L1, which loops back again and again and again and again. You kind of uh, I uh, reiterate on the same loop and learn. Okay. So that, that's my uh, suggestion. So then going to the next level, of course, the learning is going to be different here. Okay. So here, what do I learn? So here you learn an entire different thing. So this is where you start officially learning uh, what is like an introduction to robotic course. There are a lot of introduction to robotic course online, which is free of cost and which you can learn it. So there, basically, you will learn about manipulators, you will learn about field mobile robots. So those are the things which you start off, which you start off learning uh, on the second stage. So that's, that's one thing. And then you, you concentrate on the algorithmic level. So far, I didn't use all these kind of terms because L1 is just to get you started and get you motivated and keep you on toes on that particular uh, area. Okay, so next is where you actually get into the field and start looking at all different terminology, all different subfields. So an algorithmic level, for example, what is an obstacle avoidance algorithm do? What is a path planning algorithm do? What is a trajectory planning algorithm? There is something called SLAM. A lot of different terminology, control system. So these terminologies are these algorithms, you really get into. Depending on what you do, you, you get into one of those. That's why I've given uh, various kinds of uh, examples. Okay. So that's one thing you have to learn, obviously. Then the next is math. Math plays a very important role in, in robotics. So uh, naming a few concepts or few uh, areas, linear algebra, matrix algebra, those are the very basic things which you need to know uh, to, to get yourself uh, familiar with this field or to, to start uh, learning the field. Those are the basic math requirements. So you have to brush upon all those things. So you'll you'll really see uh, how matrix plays a role. All those things you really understand. Visualize things. So far, matrix would be just for you numbers, but now you can actually visualize and see robot uh, using matrix and then uh, doing some real time uh, tasks. So then you you get into uh, mechanical modeling. And that if that is what is your area. I mean, you like to design things. You like to design different kind of structure or different kind of uh, physical structures for a robot and things then yeah mechanical modeling to start learning different CAD tools and stuff so that's one one aspect of it then programming SOCs if you remember in L1 stage I was just uh, talking about programming a simple microcontroller like Arduino and stuff but here see the, the term the, the things are different Raspberry Pi Beagle bone you start looking at those boards also so the picture what you see is a Raspberry Pi board okay so it is based on ARM uh, you have an entire operating system running on it. You can even load your Ubuntu Linux operating system on it, and then you can have your own application program for your corresponding robot, and that can be used. So it's a very, very uh, flexible and uh, uh, very, very essential uh, kind of uh, microcontroller if you're getting your application, your robot to the next level or your skill to the next level. So those are the uh, key things which you learn. And of course, always you will have to keep you updated with all the advanced sensors and actuators. So that comes 
uh, even now. So the kind of sensor you use there in the L1 and L2 obviously will change, and you will be updated. This. So the the next question is where to learn. Uh, again, one of the uh, I cannot leave this because this gives you all the basics. So engineering curriculum courses. There are courses for introduction to robotics. All your math courses. Those are for one place. Or if you want to quick start and then start, not wait for your second year, third year. So obviously online Coursera, Udemy, uh, all those things. There are courses. I mean, in Coursera, if you take uh, uh, courses are free if you don't want certificates. Okay, so you can take up courses and then uh, uh, understand things. And there are free courses available for introduction to robotics. At least I know there are free courses available where you can take in and then start learning things. So yeah, this is what. Expected if you are in this stage or if you're starting to get in this stage, that is L2 stage, that is the intermediate stage. So, what would be the hands on for this stage? Uh, so, the hands on for this stage is uh, very simple. Uh, I have divided this into two different things hardware level and software level. Okay, first let's see the hardware part. So, you can build your own robot that is basically using the modeling technique which you have learned. You can build a 3D model of that model. And there is something called 3D printer that I think I'm, I'm sure all of you are aware of it. So you can easily print your bot, 3D print your bot, and then start attaching all your electronics and then try to make it, uh, an application or a robot and then start programming it. Or you can fabricate on your own. Fabrication, you have a lot of materials which you can easily use and then fabricate. Okay. So with that is possible. So you can build your own bot uh, purely or, or more and more here, mechanical uh, things are coming up. So then, what kind of robot I build depends on really what kind of application you're talking about, whether it's a manipulator or a mobile robot, things like that. So if you if you look at the picture below, you you have on the leftmost you have uh, that's a, a micro drone. That's a micro drone. It's a palm sized drone which was entirely modeled and then 3D printed. Okay. So then uh, basically that is used for uh, a simple path planning application and stuff. We have built that drone. So that is one example of a 3D printed robot. And the next one, what do you see? It's an hexapod. Uh, hexapod is a bio-inspired robot, wherein it, uh, it, it was inspired from this spider kind of walking mechanism. So this is a six-legged robot, six-legged mobile robot. So every leg has three motors. So totally it has 18 different uh, motors. And then uh, it's it's used uh, for walking on an uneven surface and those kind of scenarios we are using this uh, robot. So that is one. So I, all I want to showcase is different kind of structure or different kind of uh, robot for different kind of application. So the the drone is powered by a microcontroller called Arduino Nano. We wanted smaller microcontroller obviously because the drone is itself the form factor itself is small. So we use Arduino Nano there, and this hexapod. We're using Arduino Mega. See, uh, even for these kind of applications, still Arduino board helps you out. There are different kinds of Arduino board. So this is Arduino Mega because there are a lot of motors and a lot of sensors. We want a little bigger board. So that, that's two pictures. Then uh, the, the, the answer for this is still the same. You can buy on online site and you can buy offline. Then, then comes the next stream on this and so on. Either you go this way, wherein you are to, so passionate that you have to build your own bot and then try to implement something. Or I'm passionate on the software side. I want to build algorithmically. I want to be stronger algorithmically. I want to build a good control software for a robot. New simulation. There are a lot of simulation tools available. Some are proprietary and some are open source. I have named a few open source simulation tools there. Player stage is one. That's a 2D uh, simulation environment. Then there is something called player gazebo. That's a 3D uh, simulation environment. There's something called report. There are a lot of other open source tools available. And then there are even proprietary tools, uh, one of which is MATLAB, which is very, very popular in engineering. Uh, MATLAB is used for a lot of different applications, and robotics is one of the fields wherein you can use MATLAB. But of course, you need a uh, license for that. So uh, like that, you can use any one of the tools and then implement. So here, the emphasis is totally on the control software, and it is on the algorithm there. Okay, so, so if you want to concentrate on that, there is no issue. You can easily concentrate on that and improve your knowledge there. So this is a very fast way to test your solution, obviously, because software simulation is faster compared to your hardware. Because hardware has its own challenge. On top of it, you will have your uh, system software. So it, it has double-layer challenge. 
So, but only issue with uh, software is or, or simulation is it's an ideal environment condition, uh, which is not capable uh, to simulate your uh, real time scenario. In real time scenario, you will have a lot of other different variables, wherein in that, but in, in your simulation, those variables are ideal. Yeah, so that's the only uh, issue in uh, going with software. But to getting started, simulation tools are always best. Just to understand or just to make sure your algorithm works fine, you do it in simulation, and then you go to your hardware. People do that way also. They go to simulation first, finish off their implementation, and then implement it in the hardware. So that's all about. So testing is again uh, participate in uh, international. Now we are we are talking about a different ball game entirely on competition level. I'm not still talking on line follower, things like that. I don't know how many of you are aware of it. There are international competitions where robots play football. Uh, robots like wheeled robot, or as you see in the picture below, that is basically robot uh, playing uh, football, a uh, 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 humanoid robot playing football. So that is possible. And people are uh, uh, participating in the competition and showcasing their talent. And in the picture on the right, is actually robot doing a weightlifting competition, performing a weightlifting in a competition. Uh, you see the weights are all CD. So that's a very popular competition, uh, which is known as FIRA. Now you can see in the top uh, in the content FIRA World Cup. So the FIRA World Cup contains a lot of different events, and one of the events is weightlifting for robots. So that's one thing you can test. And obviously, one more place is this is where you, you do your UG, PG, thesis, or your final year project, right? So you will be ready to do your final year project. Uh, on this, if you gain all this knowledge in health, I mean, like I said, it's an iterative loop. You can um, always go back and learn and then implement test. You can do all the things again. So that's about L2. So uh, coming back to L3, L2 and L3, I don't see much difference. Uh, it's only thing is you, you get into the advanced field of robotics. For example, there is something called swarm intelligence. Swarm intelligence is where you start looking at multiple robots working in an environment for different purposes, okay? Multiple robots uh, work in a single environment, that's called swarm. Then you look at artificial intelligence application in robotics, like machine learning, deep learning, reinforcement learning, those kind of techniques come into play. Then there are bio-inspired robotics. You know, robotics snake is there, uh, uh, which is used for a lot of uh, applications. There is uh, robot fish, it actually swims inside. It has a form factor of a fish and then swims. You have robot birds. It's a, it's a mechanical structure wherein it has wings and stuff. It can fly and do different purposes. So people do things on uh, those kind of aspects also. Okay. Then probably uh, one more thing, probably you would have heard of it, ROS. That's robot operating system. Uh, some of you even might have thought why ROS has not come so far. Uh, people might differ in opinion. My opinion is ROS uh, is not something essential that you have to start learning in the beginning. ROS is required. I mean, it, it is required for a different level of application. Not all robotic applications have to be implemented in ROS, not, not necessary. At least that is my opinion. People might uh, differ, but uh, I mean, can challenge my opinion, but my opinion is this ROS can be used at this level or learned at this level. So it's basically an open source uh, software on top of it, you can uh, implement your uh, control software. Okay. So, so far we were implementing the control software directly on the board. Now it will be implemented on top of an operating system. On that you will have ROS and then your control software. What's the advantage? Why do I have to do this? Okay, one thing is, um, it's a very it's an open source tool and wherein there are a lot of developments and happening there are a lot of developers are working on it as we speak now and you get a lot of algorithms and a lot of apis and things and then portability if i have ROS on a robot uh, let's say i have ROS on a mobile robot it's a different kind of a mobile robot the same ROS and same application i can take it and then put it into a different uh, mobile robot with different form factors still it will work Still, it'll work. So that is the portability I'm talking. About, okay, and I can uh, test everything in my computer without even a hardware with ROS. ROS has its own inbuilt simulator, Gazebo. I, I just mentioned now, right? That Gazebo has uh, is there in ROS. So I can test everything in my computer itself with that simulator, and I can directly 
port the code from my ROS uh, from my computer to the uh, robot which has ROS running. Okay, so that is also possible. So that portability portability is also possible. So putting all this uh, uh, robotic operating system is an advantage at school. Then of course mechanical modeling, all these things are same the facing center. You learn, you keep learning. Then uh, where to learn? Same answer. There is no uh, different answer. Okay. Yes. So that is what it is. Uh, whatever picture you see, that is an uh, uh, raw simulation tool with JC. Okay. Hands on stage. Uh, it is same hands on stage. Only difference uh, would be on the uh, research platforms and uh, the hardware you use will be of a higher level hardware. You can even buy research platforms available directly and then implement, or you build your own hardware. And it's all the same type of on components, online, offline, where to buy. It's all same. And simulation tool, I don't have any any change between L2 and L3. It's only the level change. Okay, the tool change is all tool is all same. Okay, the picture what you see below on the left side under the the hardware, that's a biped model which was built as part of a PhD thesis working on that. Biped is tool exists. Okay, the same thing was simulated in MATLAB. On the right side, whatever you see the picture, that is MATLAB. We first tested on a MATLAB and then we implemented on this hardware. So like I said. That that procedure people do always. So how do I test it? Now you go to a bigger level of competition. There is competition by DARPA, that's an American uh, research organization, uh, uh, military research organization. DARPA, uh, uh, they have a robotics challenge. The picture you see below, just below, uh, the robot, red color robot, it actually drives the car. It drives that vehicle and goes. Okay, it's a humanoid robot which is capable of driving. So. It was uh, it's a snap of the start for robotic challenge probably three four years back. You have Mars rover competition. The right side picture is a Mars rover in a competition. So of course you you do your uh, PGPHD thesis on this level. Then of course you can publish your uh, work on a conference and journal because if you look at it, this is all on the research aspect. So naturally you will be able to publish things on this particular uh, level. So. Uh, summing up all together, I think I've, I've taken enough time. So, first, my suggestion would be don't get into this thing called learning loop. You you start learning and you keep learning, learning, learning. You don't really implement. You keep learning. Something will come up again. You start looking at it again. You start uh, learning that. You you keep learning. So that is what I call as learning loop. Just don't get into that. You learn something, implement as soon and as small as possible. Start implementing. Start getting your hands on. That is the first uh, suggestion I would give. Okay. So, will 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 this end after L3 stage? Obviously, the answer is no. You, you, the, this field is a very rapidly growing field. So, you should keep reading and keep up your uh, keep up with the latest uh, up uh, up to date information. That's always uh, important. So, whatever robotics courses. Which I said online course, course, uh, Udemy kind of thing. There is a list of courses for all the different levels, L1, L2, L3 level in this website. So you can easily go. This is our Bangalore chapter, uh, RAS Bangalore chapter website. So we have we have curated it recently, probably six months back. So this is an up to date, uh, up, uh, updated version. So you can easily uh, figure out. There are categorized into paid uh, courses, uh, free courses. You can look at it. So that would give you the, the starting point. So the entire levels and stages is all my own take on getting started with robotics. So people's opinion can uh, differ, but at least my aim is this will put you at some direction so that you can start. So that was my aim in uh, uh, making this entire uh, so, yeah. So with that, uh, I finish this topic. Like I said, I will uh, give you a glance of white click. So it's, it's an international organization for engineers, and uh, it's a very big organization. Uh, are live in 160 countries, and you have those many members. It's a very big organization. It has 39 technical societies. So one of the society is uh, IEEE Robotics and Automation Society. So that's a very uh, this society is a very active society. At least in this field, if you want to know. Get to get to know the updated things. You can always go into VAS website and see. You will you, all the updates, latest trends, and uh, things would come there. Okay. 
So RAS is an society with 14,000 members with 110 countries in it. Roughly the size is roughly half of America. And 15% of that strength is students. So students constitute a major uh, uh, role in this uh, membership. So that is right to see RAS. So what does RAS do? RAS's aim is to uh, conduct conferences, workshops, publications, technical uh, uh, committees. You have uh, student chapters formed. You have summer schools offered, other activities. There are a lot of other activities which revolves around this robotics and automation field. Okay, that's the aim here. So then we have our own RAS Bangalore chapter. We have seven active student branch chapters. Uh, seven different uh, engineering colleges in Bangalore. So our aim is to foster collaboration between academia and industry because Bangalore is, uh, as we know, startups are very, very uh, popular and rapidly uh, growing uh, uh, startups in Bangalore. So the major area, one of the major areas is robotics. We have a lot of robotics startups in Bangalore. So we would like to connect. That's what we are trying to do. So foster startups, that is one of our aim then tap into the huge student potential organized talks from leading experts collaborating with other chapters for conferences and workshops and of course train students for various aspects of robotics so these are all uh, the things so as a student if you if, as a student branch if you guys are really interested in uh, forming a student branch chapter these are, these are the simple steps you can really uh, start the chapter uh, if you have uh, six student members one faculty advisor who are part of RAS, and then uh, it's above that it's a single sim simple online petition with which you can easily start your uh, member, I mean student branch up. So with that, networking capability of yours increases and you start getting to know people in the same area. You conduct events in your institute to train or to help out your uh, juniors and your friends. So that way even you learn and then you help learn others. That's the aim. So, we, uh, as a Bangalore chapter, we help you, we can help you initiate this petition and other stuff that are interested. So, so with that, I, I end my talk. So these are some of the robots which we are built in our labs. So, that's my email ID. Uh, that's my website. I try to update it uh, at least as, as uh, much as possible. So, you can see some of my projects and things there. Then, uh, the next is our ICP RAS Bangalore chapter uh, website. Yes, so with that, I end my talk. Thank you for your patience. It's been uh, almost an hour. Thank you. Yes. Thank you all. Yes. Hi, sir. Yes, yes, sure, sure. sure. We can take up. So, Pramila is asking how to get into robot simulation the software and all how to get into the deep robot simulation uh so so basically uh, uh robotic simulation uh just first i would suggest you to choose the simulator like i said there are a lot of different simulators depending on the kind of application you choose a simulator so if you ask me my personal suggestion would be uh to choose simulator like webbot so webbot is a a 3d simulator wherein you can a simulate robot like your manipulator kind of stuff or you can simulate robot like a mobile robot a build one or a, a humanoid kind of robot okay so uh, once you choose that then you look at your application so uh, the, any of uh, any simulator you choose there are uh, help documents which get you started with that tool. so you you start first you start learning there itself they will uh, help you out in creating a small robot and then trying to make it move front to back, things like that. So you start with that. So once you get familiarized with that tool, then you really start, you should, then you should start thinking on what kind of application you want to build and then start thinking in how to implement in this simulator. So the first step for you is to choose a simulator. And my suggestion is to choose an open source simulator. So you don't get into this uh, licensing or proprietary issue. You don't get into all those issues. So there are open source simulators like I that will be my answer. Hope it answers your question. Uh, sir, there's one question from yeah. Jane Sri She is asking, like, sir, any good idea for doing final year project regards robotics in AI? Uh, okay, that's a very deep question. Uh, it it really it is a one-on-one -on -one, uh, discussion for uh, probably an half an hour or so. 
or else i cannot answer because it all depends on what is your uh, see robotics as an area there are a lot of sub areas right you have to choose one of the sub area and then uh, look at what interests you that's one aspect of it then you should choose a guide who can guide you in that aspect so it's a, it's a very uh, deep question but i can help you with the steps first step for you is to just google uh, all the different robotics area and then see what interests you or see what uh, you feel that you can do as your final year project then start looking at that particular area in terms of uh, research publication Uh, this is conference publication i am not asking you to go through the entire paper at least see the first paragraph of the paper that that will give you idea what they are doing when you start learning reading these things then you some point of time you will instantly have some idea branching out of that uh, paper okay so that is your seed so from that you start building up uh, your uh, final year project so that would be the best way so in this process if you have a guide who can help you out then you can do this faster okay yes. so so that would be my uh, suggestion start start googling and narrow down to some robotics sub publications like like industrial robot or mobile robot in the mobile robot wheel robot humanoid look uh, get get that thing straight out then go go deeper into that specific field so that would be my suggestion so uh, right out i cannot say some project name that about Sir, I myself have one question. Yes, yeah. Uh, so, like in this, every college engineering students after fourth year they'll be behind placements, like most of them. Like after yeah. doing this robotics, after getting into this field, how can one get into this? Like, uh, in this field, how can they succeed in this field? You mean to say, uh, you mean to ask job opportunities in this field? uh something similar to that sir no? okay see uh, if you look at job opportunities in this field uh, there are many there are many probably uh, companies when they come and recruit you uh, recruit uh, on campus they would recruit you as some kind of a software engineer and stuff you know like i said in the talk itself many mnc's have uh, robotics as their one of the streams on which they work you name any mnc i'm sure they will have a robotics division inside and they are working on something they are working on it for sure okay because this is one of the trends so naturally every industry would try to take their uh, part in it so naturally all those industries have some role to play either it's a software industry or an entire hardware industry if you have uh, work in it so obviously which means what there is job opportunity and there is uh, job offers would be available okay and for a fresher i would suggest you guys start looking at the startup company that is where you you learn and then help the company grow also. you grow as the company grow in in startup when you join okay. and startup companies won't have the reservation that you are a fresher and uh, you if you can can you work on this kind of a field so that that kind of mindset won't be there because it's an open mindset obviously it's a startup so so i would suggest you start personally looking at all these kind of startup companies and see there are uh, job opening and then start looking at what is their profile build your profile based on that or see whether your profile is matching theirs i'm saying profile in terms of the, the robotic teams or the projects you're working on okay so that is how you you build it so that naturally you end up in land in one of these uh, startup companies thank you sir thank you so much and that there are no more questions okay okay fine sir thank shall you shall we so wrap it up the, oh yes sir thank you so much ah. for the webinar sir thank you thank you all yeah thank you thank you so much sir thank it you. was a pleasure listening to you thank you